Hello everyone, so in today's video we're going to be looking at Google's latest AI model, Gemini 2.0. And Google describes Gemini 2.0 as their most capable AI model yet. And this model can see, hear, think, plan, remember, and take action. And this is an advantage of the Gemini models with the multimodal capabilities. They can process and understand text, images, audio, and video. So in this video, we're going to be clarifying how to use the various Gemini 2.0 models, which can get a bit confusing as there are a number of them, and there are different sites where you can access these various models. And I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to get the most out of these models. So let's get started. So in order to access Gemini 2.0, what you need to do is go to gemini.google.com and then once you get there you'll find at the top here that there's an option to use a number of models so you've got the 2.0 flash we've got the 2.0 flash thinking experimental we've got the 2.0 flash thinking experimental with apps and all these are the free models that you can access straight away and you've also got gemini advanced which is the pro model that you have to pay for and that's 20 dollars a month now i'm going to show you at the end of the video how you can access gemini pro experimental for free using um, a different website so let's get started with the initial free models so just before we begin using the models i want to just explain what the free models are and what you get with each one of them so with the gemini 2.0 flash it's available for free and it's best for speed efficiency it's the fastest model that's been tested. It can summarize information, answer your questions, and generate text. It also has web browsing access and works across those AI products. Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking is also for free, and this is used for logical reasoning, problem solving. It does not have web access in the free version. And this you can think of as a similar version to the O3 Mini or the DeepSeek R1. Now, Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking with apps is also free, and that combines reasoning with websites and Google integrations, and you can use it with Google Search, YouTube, and Google Maps. Now, I'm going to start off with the 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental with Apps, and I want to show you some really great use cases. So I'm going to select this model. Once I've done that, you'll see it says here, you're using 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental with Reasoning across Google Apps, works best with YouTube, Maps, and Search. And just to make sure that it's got access to the apps, what you need to do is you need to come down to settings. And once you go into extensions, what you need to do is make sure that you've activated all the Google integrations that you want. So I've got it activated here in Google Workspace. I haven't activated Google Flights or Google Hotels, but I will activate Google Maps as well, as we will use that in one of our prompts. And I've activated YouTube as well. So now once we've made sure that everything is activated, I'm going to go back to my model and I'm in 2.0 flash thinking experimental with apps. And I'm going to add my my first prompt. So the first thing I'm going to be using it here for is to analyze this video and provide me with the detailed key insights and practical applications, as well as explanation of all the concepts, include the timestamps so I can refer to it. And I'm going to add a link to this video and you can see it's about three hours, 29 minutes long. It's an amazing video actually with Andrew Huberman and Dr. Robert Lustig talking about how sugars and processed foods impact your health. It's a really good video if you want to watch that or you can do what i'm doing right now which is get gemini to summarize this entire video for us instead of watching a three hour podcast i've added the link to the youtube video and then i'm going to enter that and you can see it's come back with the introduction, the scale of the problem, and then it's come back with a likely time segment. So from beginning to about 30 seconds, and it tells me the key insights and explains the concepts like I asked it to. And then it organizes it into practical applications. So it acknowledges the scale, shift focus to food quality, and then it moves on to the biochemistry of sugar and fructose. And then it gives me the key insights, the concepts, practical applications then. And you can see that it does this for the entire video. So it's chosen to structure it into these three key sections of key insights, concepts explained, and practical applications. And if we scroll down, we can see that it's given us about six different sections and it's given us some links as well. And then it goes on to explain the concepts. So this is a really useful way if you want Gemini to summarize and analyze a YouTube video and to give you some practical insights. So I can just come here and ask a specific question about a certain part in the video. So I'm going to just ask based on the discussion in the video, are all calories the same? It comes back with a response and it says, no, according 
to the discussion in the video, not all calories are the same. The video challenges the simple idea that a calorie is just a calorie, it emphasizes that the quality of calories matters significantly more than just the quantity. And then it just goes on to give me the information based on the video's discussion. So that's a very nice feature to have the 2.0 flash thinking experiment with apps. So the next feature they're going to be looking at is its Google search capabilities within this 2.0 flash thinking experimental with apps. So I'm going to add the prompt here that says using search and YouTube, identify and analyze the top AI business trends expected to significantly impact businesses in 2025, utilize industry reports, expert opinions and recent news articles and so on to show me these trends. And again, you can see that it's now showing its thinking, it's activated YouTube, so it's now looking into YouTube as well. And it's showing me the search queries that it's now um, using to generate this response. So I've got top AI business trends 2025, AI industry report 2025, business trends, expert opinions, AI business trends 2025, and so on. And then it comes back and says, based on the search results, here are some potential trends. And it gives me these trends. And then it says, I will synthesize the information from the search results in YouTube videos to create a summary of these trends, their impacts and actionable insights. And then it focuses on key themes that emerge across multiple sources. Courses. So then it comes back with that response. I can see the top AI business trends in 2025, Gentic AI, hyper personalization redefined, and so on. It gives me the entire list. And it's got the sources as well. So it's used the Google Cloud AI Trends Report 2025. I've got the Microsoft CE News Center. That's a really good way for you to have access to the latest information as well while you're doing your search. The next feature I want to show you is how we can use image based analysis and problem solving, which combines the ability of Gemini to to read images and at the same time to use as problem solving skills. And as you can see, for this feature, I'm going to be using the 2.0 flash thinking experimental model, which is the best model for logical reasoning. So I'm just going to start off by uploading the image. And this is an image I've extracted from the practice problems for spatial reasoning test questions and answers. And we can see here the problem which says which of the given shapes is the correct mirror image A, B, C or D. So we're just going to paste in the question here and we're going to enter that. And you can now see it's showing its thinking. The user is asking to find the mirror image of the shape in the first box. And then it starts by analyzing the shape. Okay, so it says the shape consists of blobs of different sizes. Now let's consider the position of these blobs from left to right in the given images. And then it considers all of the four options and then it tells us that it comes to the conclusion that the correct answer is option A which will give us the correct mirror image and if we go back here and look at the answer we'll find that it is in fact the correct answer it's very strong as image processing capabilities and using its logical reasoning skills as well so I've attached an image here which I've extracted from the maths vista test on hugging face that's a science question and this shows us the relationship between different organisms. And I'm going to add a question here that says, which organism will be most affected if the algae was eliminated? Okay, so you can see now the thinking process as well. It starts to identify the algae's role in the food web. It traces the direct consumers of the algae, considers the impact of the algae removal on direct consumers, and examines the indirect impact as well. And then it starts to determine who's going to be the most affected. So, and this was the image that we had initially uploaded. And if we look at the final response, we'll find that the common water flea is the correct answer with the common water flea being the one that's going to be most affected. So this 2.0 flash thinking experimental model is really useful if you're trying to get it to solve problems, use its reasoning capabilities and to give you a multi-step response. So the next thing I want to show you is that you can also use a 2.0 flash thinking experimental to generate some really good codes. So I've just added a prompt here that says generate a fully functional web app called daily mood tracker using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. The app should include the following features, header and introduction, a title displaying the daily mood tracker with a brief description, drop down for mood selection, a drop down menu allowing users to select their mood, dynamic background change. So the background should change based on the selected mood. The motivational quote generator that comes when clicked and it generates this random motivational quote and so on. And then I'm just going to enter that. Okay, and now it's finished generating the code. So I'm now going to activate and run this code. So now we've opened our mood tracker. You can see that it's a fully functional daily mood tracker. So I'm going to select how are you feeling today? So let's go for happy. And then you can see that the 
background colors now change to correspond to bright yellow, happy color. You can select a motivational quote. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. And then it's logged in today's mood, which is happy, logged at 1225. And let's just say I decided to go for neutral just to test out the features. You can see the background colors gray. And let's get another motivational quote. It says the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And it's also logged in. And let's just try the sad one as well. Let's see what color it gives us. It gives us a blue color. So you can see that it's followed the instructions in the code. It has these interactive elements. It's been quite clever in the way it's responded to the color prompts and depending on the mood. And we get the motivational quotes as well. So another very good feature to use with Google Gemini. Okay, so what we're going to be doing as well is we're adding a prompt here in the 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental with apps just, just to showcase how it can use different apps. So we've seen how it works with YouTube and now we can see how it works with the Google Maps integration as well. So I'm going to add a prompt that says show me the best route to get from London to Glasgow. Again, you can see it starts to show its thinking. And then what I really like about this is that it will open the maps inside the response. And it will show you the exact route that you need to take using Google Maps. And it will tell you the best route to get from London to Glasgow by driving is the M6 motorway. And then it's approximately 415 miles and takes about six hours and 47 minutes to drive. So another really nice way to add these Google integrations within your search. So the next thing I want to show you is how you can access their pro model. And in order for you to do that, you need to go to aistudio.google.com. And once you come here to the models, you'll see that you can access the Gemini 2.0 Pro Experimental 0205 Flash model, which is what we're going to be using here in order for us to try the pro model. And a few things to notice is that the token count for this model is massive. You get over 2 million tokens and you can then add your prompt here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to upload a file which is a textbook and just to show you it's it's a 650 page textbook and what we're going to be doing is that once it's extracted that I'm just going to ask it to search and the information from figure 1 1 the 10 occupations with the fastest employment growth analyze whether this information is still relevant. So now come back with the response. It has taken quite a bit of time and we'll see this with the AI studio that it generally takes quite a bit of time to come back with the response. So let's just look at how it's broken down the response. So it says here, this document is a portion of a textbook, likely an introductory chapter on human resource management, which it is. So we've got chapter one. It first tells us what this section is covering. So chapter one, changing nature of human resource management. And it comes back with some information on that. Now it goes on to answer the question. So answers to questions based on the document. document and extract provided only covers chapter one okay because i specified that i wanted to use the figure from chapter one and it says how have some of the hr challenges listed in the chapter affected organizations at which you've worked okay it gives us back some information that the document lists focusing on the major challenges and then to answer how they are relevant today consider examples of each so it's taken technological change it's taken workforce availability and then it comes to the analysis of the figure the 10 occupations with the fastest employment growth from 1996 to 2006 and it, then it starts to break down the information from that figure and it says the top 10 fastest growth occupation in terms of percentage growth are heavily concentrated in two areas information technology and healthcare it starts to answer the question so there's the relevance of that today 2024 and beyond is still relevant but with shifts the IT remains strong healthcare boom why the trend persists so we know that there's digital transformations the data explosion there's aging population uh, um, increased healthcare. So we can see that it's really done a great job in terms of analyzing the overall question. It's identified the top two key areas. I would have liked it to speak a lot more just in general about digital transformation, but the explosion in AI and the trends that we're seeing today. But in terms of coming back with the response, um, I think it's given me a very good analysis that I can use as a foundation to build on. So this was the overview of the Gemini 2.0 flash. We've covered how we can access the three general free models, 2.0 Flash, the 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental, the 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental with apps. We've also looked at how we can access the pro model on AI Studio. And this is a good way for you to play around with different models, depending on the reason that you're using it for. Let me know in the comments what you like to use 2.0 Flash for, how your experience using it has been, and whether you've actually had a chance to experiment with the AI Studio. So thank you.
for watching and see you in the next video.